the Greens senator who's the spokesperson for CSG mining and other mining issues. Please make a very welcome Senator Larissa Waters. Thanks, S. Hi, everyone. It's great to see you here today. It's such a pleasure to be here. Um, as you know, I'm your spokesperson in Canberra for the Greens and um, hoping to get a bit more company from either some more Greens or some other parties that don't think much of coal seam gas either. So that's up to you guys later on this year, whenever it will be. Um, but I wanted to say, don't, don't lose heart. We've recently seen some really good wins against coal seam gas. And what I think the Lock the Gate movement and the work of you here today is achieving is a real community awareness. I think maybe a good, perhaps 18 months ago, people didn't know what coal seam gas was. Now, I find people in Brisbane ask me about it proactively. So the message is getting out there and people are worried for good reason. They're learning and they're hearing the stories about um, the Condamine River bubbling with gas. Um, they're hearing that farmers' bores are dropping. They're hearing the stories from um, often some of the farming women who get knocks on the door at six o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. They're hearing this absolute barrage of intrusion into people's lives. Um, and it's not just those surface impacts, it's of course what's happening underground. And what I find the hardest to believe and what I rail against the most is the fact that we actually still don't even know the impacts of this industry. We've got folk like the National Water Commission who say there could be seriously long-term impacts to our groundwater and the government's like, oh, whatever, we'll just give you your approvals because, hey, we're going to get some royalties out of it and, gee, you're promising some jobs and that looks good in an election. So I think it's just outrageous. In fact, I think it's criminal that we have governments giving the tick to coal seam gas when there are still this huge unanswered questions and serious threat to our long-term um, groundwater and not just the um, purity of the water but also the level itself. As I'm sure people here know, you punch a well through an aquifer to get to a coal seam, you're going to create a connection and you're going to end up potentially contaminating that water with the fracking fluids and the naturally occurring BTEX in those coal seams um, or you're going to end up with that groundwater table dropping. So serious concerns about water. Um, and that's why I think, sadly, Queensland has really been a test case for the rest of the country. And we've seen um, communities in New South Wales actually learning from the Queensland experience. I think the industry went so fast here, it kind of caught us all off guard. Um, we're mobilising now, but what I think you can be really proud of is the fact that you're now helping other communities to resist coal seam gas. And they haven't got their claws in um, further south yet, and that is such a powerful thing to be achieving. We've seen some excellent news in New South Wales recently with uh, the Glenoogie community locking the gate, um, the Gurley community 100% locking the gate. Um, and even last night at about five o'clock we heard that Apex has pulled out of coal seam gas in the Sydney drinking water catchment. So this is what happens when communities stand together. Locking the gate works. So thank you for everything that you're doing in that respect and keep it up and how abysmal it is that you've got to break the law to do so. Um, in the federal parliament about two years ago I introduced a bill that would allow farmers to lock the gate, make it legal and we got laughed at. People said that, oh, that was ridiculous. We were, we were just anti-industry. We just wanted everyone to live in caves and wear hair shirts and, you know, all the usual stuff that they say about us Greens. Um, so we've got a bit of a way to go in Parliament and it's one of those instances where the community is really leading the way. And it's up to you guys to keep doing what you're doing because gradually the rest of the public is becoming more aware and it can't be long until the other um, larger party politicians actually get that there's a real problem here and that people are worried and they don't want coal seam gas anywhere near them. They don't want it at all. It is a risk to our land, it's a risk to our water and it's a risk to our climate. Um, finally, we've got the CSIRO looking into how much this stuff leaks. We know it leaks from the wells. We're seeing that it leaks from the pipes as well. They then used a vast amount of energy to compress it for export because much of this stuff is for export, as you know. So in fact, what we're expecting CSIRO to conclude when they issue their report in December is that actually coal seam gas ain't that much better for the climate than coal. So what is the bloody point of risking farmland and water and you're not even getting any climate benefit out of it? There is just no good news associated with this industry. Except, of course, if you're one of the overseas shareholders in the company making a mozza out of it. Well, it's not worth it. It's not worth the risk for our precious little 
um, agricultural land that's of good quality here in Queensland and it's not worth risking those um, s critically important groundwater supplies. Um, so we're standing with you in the parliament. Um, I think Gordon from Stop CSG is here today, um, another party that's standing with you to oppose coal seam gas. More and more I think the momentum is building. It's building in the public and gradually it will build in the parliament. We did have a win um, about a month or so ago with finally some federal intervention to try and protect aquifers from coal seam gas. That was largely due to independent Tony Windsor and full credit to him. Um, coal seam gas is one of his key issues and he um, pressured the government immensely along with the Greens in the Senate to say we need the federal government to step in because the state governments are letting this stuff run rampant with virtually no controls. Um, so we've now got that level of federal oversight. Um, we want it to ki it won't kick into anything that's on foot, but it'll kick in for the next lot of proposals that apply. Um, but that's not enough. We actually don't know whether we can fix up aquifers once they've been depleted or contaminated. And um, I was talking with John McCarthy, who's here from the Courier Mail, to hopefully give this issue some prominence. Um, Arrow Energy, of course, the, the fourth of the big CSG projects proposed for this region, who haven't got their final approvals yet, they've got some preliminary approvals, and apparently they fessed up to the Environment Department that they had 100 breaches of their preliminary approvals. Breaches of conditions as to where to put the wells, breaches of biodiversity offsets, um, and breaches about how they're storing the water that's extracted from the coal seams, you know, that salty, toxic mess that's left after coal seam gas mining. So they can't even comply with these preliminary rules. Um, and nobody knew. It took the company themselves to voluntarily fess up to the Environment Department. They are not being watched properly. Our governments are under-resourced. We've seen Campbell Newman slash 220 people from the Environment Department already. How the hell are they meant to keep an eye on your water um, and the climate and the land more broadly when there's no folk and they're not resourced to actually go out and check? In Queensland, the mining companies write the rules um, and as Drew says, and he's absolutely right, it is just self-regulation from woe to go. So that's got to change and I think it will change if we continue on with this campaign. Um, and on Drew, I just want to say um, it has been so exciting to watch the development of Lock the Gate campaign. Um, I think there was a bit of a period there in Queensland where um, for some reason activism had gone to sleep. But it's taken Drew as the lightning rod to stimulate people against this huge threat um, and we've now seen um, a movement that's growing and it's gone nationwide and it's even going international now. So I want to thank Drew because uh, he absolutely deserves it. This man's amazing and he's tireless um, and he's helping empower people and that is so important because it really feels like a, da a David and Goliath struggle and yet when you've got communities that can stand together, you can win and you will win. So don't give up. Keep relying on each other and making each other strong. Um, the message is getting out there. It's getting out there to the public. Um, it's slowly getting out there to the other politicians. Um, the Greens are your voice so far in the Parliament. We'd like a bit more company, either from other Greens or other people who agree with us on coal seam gas and say no more. Um, so today we're announcing that our uh, taking to the election that our policy is for no more coal seam gas. Um, we didn't need it in the first place and the stuff's dangerous. So we'll be standing firm to say no new coal seam gas, no new coal mines either. Uh, we've got renewable energy alternatives. We've got all of the reports done even by government now that say we can meet our energy needs through clean energy um, and it doesn't have all of these downsides with farmland and water. So we know we've got genuine alternatives that don't threaten our regional communities, don't threaten our groundwater and our climate. Um, it's just the dollars that's meant that the coal seam gas companies have got their hooks in, their claws into our major party politicians. So it's up to you to let your representatives know in the big parties, not good enough. You'll change your vote and you'll expect better from them and you want them to stop being the mouthpiece of the industry and start actually being your mouthpiece again. Uh, I think that's really powerful. In an election year, that's when you've got the most influence. That's when they're most desperate to um, remind you that, oh yeah, okay, maybe they do care. So use that power. Make sure you get active, send those letters in, phone calls, request meetings, write to your local paper. Um, continue to have wonderful celebrations like this which strengthen you and which remind you that you're not alone. You're actually part of a broader movement that's on the right side of history. 
So thanks for everything you do. Have an absolute ball tonight. Um, unfortunately, we can't stay the night, but um, so we're going to miss a damn good party by the sound of it. Um, I've enjoyed some great music so far. I love those last guys from Brizzy. So um, enjoy tonight, uh, revel in it, and know that you've got people in Canberra listening to you and that I think we're now starting to actually turn the tide. There's a real sense of momentum against coal seam gas, and that's thanks to all of you folks. So keep it up, and we'll get there in the end. Thanks, everyone. Yeah.